Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today we're taking a look at the new APS3E emulator version 1.27 update. While this isn't a massive update and the developers didn't release any official change log, I did notice a few subtle changes. The performance feels slightly better. Nothing groundbreaking, but definitely smoother than before. As with every update, the emulator is gradually improving, step by step. Let's now go through the setup process. First, open the emulator and click on next step. It'll ask you to add a firmware file. Tap on install firmware and select it from your phone's storage. After that, it will ask you to set a directory for your .iso files. You can skip this step because you can directly add .pkg or .iso games later from within the emulator. No need to pre-configure it now. The next prompt is to select a font file. Choose the option from firmware, and the emulator will automatically extract the required font from the firmware file you just installed earlier. After that, you'll be asked to select a GPU driver. If you're using a Snapdragon processor, then browse and select the custom GPU driver from your phone storage. But if you have a different processor, like MediaTek or Exynos, simply uncheck the Use Custom Driver option and you're good to go. That's the final step of the quick setup, and you'll now land on the home page of the emulator. Now we're going to do only the important settings, nothing too complex. Click on Menu, go to Settings, and head into Video Settings. Here, you'll notice something new in version 1.27. Whenever you change any setting, the text color of that option changes. It may seem minor, but it actually helps to visually confirm changes while tweaking settings. Now here are the settings I recommend. Set the renderer to default Vulkan, set the resolution to 720x4080, set shader precision to low, enable right color buffers, it's not critical, but it can help reduce graphical glitches in some games. Scroll down a bit and turn on stretch to display area, then scroll further. You'll see that the resolution scale option is now locked in this new update, so you can't change it anymore. That's one limitation that came with version 1.27. Scroll all the way to the bottom and go into Vulkan settings. Set the VRM to around 6GB, then enable force max clocks. This can significantly improve performance, though it will make your phone heat up more. Only use this if you really want to squeeze out maximum performance. Now let's go into the performance overlay settings. First, enable the overlay, then set the detail level to low. That's it for settings. Head back to the home screen. To add games, click on menu, then select add game file. You can add a .pkg or .iso PS3 game file. After selecting, wait a few minutes while the emulator adds the game. Once added, just click on the game and start playing. But keep in mind, the first time you run a game, it'll take a long time to load. That's normal because the emulator is compiling PPU modules. If your game crashes on the first launch, don't worry. Just close the app and restart it. It will stabilize as it continues compiling shaders in the background with each run. Overall, the performance is still not great for demanding PS3 titles. This emulator is far from perfect, but if you're into retro or 2D games, this emulator is already playable and enjoyable. And the good news is, with each update, it's getting closer to becoming a stable and solid PS3 emulator for Android. So that's that's everything for today's video. If you found this helpful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment below if you have any questions or game suggestions. I'll see you in the next one. Happy gaming!